Oi oi Ratbags, it's Jades with one of the most addictive games I've played in years. Tectonica is now out on PC and Xbox Games Pass. I sunk about 12 hours on PC, loved it. Booted it up on my Xbox Series X and that's exactly what you're seeing today. I'm going to show you how to play the game. I'm going to get through the first area with lots of top tips and then look out for more continuing videos as I'm really loving this game. A mix of Minecraft versus Satisfactory, really great game so go and try it out for yourself. And let's go, how to play Tectonica. Seems pretty obvious, but don't forget to pick up the pickaxe. I mean, you can't really go through anywhere without it. You soon will get much more powerful tools, so don't panic. You're not going to be digging, digging holes with just this pointy thing all the time. So, first things first. You do have a story and a guide basically telling you what to do. However, it does rattle through quite a few things early game, and it's kind of confusing. It, in fact, gives you a bunch of stuff at times, and then you're like wondering what you should be doing. Let's so go ahead and press the X button and flick over to your journal. This will give you an idea about what you should be doing. Not the logs, that's just simply a story that you found and not the data bank either. The journal is what you want to focus on if you're ever a bit lost. Right now it hasn't got anything going on other than just the tutorial, but soon it will fill up with quests that you can complete. This first area that you come across is quite expansive, but once you've actually done the parts for the tutorial, I would say move on to the next area and make that your main hub. It's got far more resources that you can mine and a much larger space for you to set up your first big factory. Now you've already got a bunch of components if you've gone and looted some of the chests and you can see what you can make by using the right stick to move over. You can always craft pretty much anything using handcrafting but it will take longer. That's why you need to set up fabricators later on to do it faster. The best feature about this game is you don't have to make all the individual components Instead, when you go ahead and craft something, it will simply make the components for you. It will take a bit longer, but it's really good. Go ahead and craft all four of them and get straight over to this iron spot here. Grab one of your machines, rotate it and put the other one next to it as well. We'll soon get rid of this piece of junk, so don't panic about that. Now on the flip side, go and find that nice big bit of copper ore across the way. Hopefully you've been doing this already since you probably had the game a while. My biggest tip here is that you can actually dig out the area around the ore and this might give you the opportunity to have more access to the copper alone. So it's always worth, once you get the next tool, digging out a little bit to see if you can fit any more drills around it. Don't forget also, you can build platforms eventually where you can stack drills on top and that means you'll be able to get even more resources. But through my playthrough, I've put about 15 hours in on PC now. I found you don't really need to do that too much. You should get enough from just having two or three drills on the floor. So next, go and gather as much of this stuff as you can. All this plant matter, eventually you'll be able to go ahead and create this yourself by growing certain crops. But right now we just need it as fuel for our drills. You wanna put about 250 in each one. And honestly, it won't take long at all if you just keep spamming all the buttons to pick up. Now you can see it's mining and we're getting enough ore. Now there are other things you can go and collect right now. Remember, there's no enemies in this game. You've got these weird purple cores and this is how you're going to unlock new technology. First, go through all the chests and take anything that's there and then grab all the rest of the iron. And that's pretty much what you're doing. You have these basic stages that progress through different caves and different areas of the map. These terminals will give you tasks that you should be doing. They're not the only tasks, but they're the main one to progress the story. Prepare the terminal, and there we go. Brand new tier unlocked. If you now take a look in journal, you can see we've got more quests, and you can see the ones we've completed, giving you a percentage point of how close you are to completing them. If something is mentioned in some sort of resource you have absolutely no clue what it is, then you're probably investigating it a bit too early. Focus on some of the lower ones, and when I mean lower, I mean the ones in the actual timeline you can see the time and when you activated them. Next, go ahead and craft your scanner. That should have unlocked by now. And go ahead and get rid of all these wrecks. Every time you scan one, you'll pick up the basic resources from it. Now, when you craft an item and you get rid of it, you generally will keep that on you. This only applies really to ancient technology that you find. Also, make sure that you scan these inserters. These can be upgraded in different ways, but basically this is how you put your gear in your furnaces, in your storage, pretty much the lifeblood of the game. Make sure you get everything that you can find. It can be easy to miss some of this stuff in the chests. Also look out for these as well. Upgrade module scanned. This will help Additional you unlock new technology, specifically more to do with gadgets and items for you to use to get around 
Now we've got the fast inserter, we've unlocked that in the tech tree. The tech tree is probably some of the most confusing things that I found in the early part of the game. You can clearly see what unlocks each tier, but even when you've got copper, iron, limestone, smelter, nothing else is still unlocking. Then you might have realized that you need them purple cores, but even when you've got a bunch in your inventory, you're still not able to go ahead and unlock stuff. Effectively, you need to make the purple cores and then place them on the ground. Later, you'll gain access to something that can stack them neatly and nicely, and effectively, they'll grow like a massive tree. This is how you research items. You'll be able to do this automated. Obviously, at the start, we're just gonna be crafting it ourselves, and you can see it's gonna cost copper wire and mechanical components. If there's an orange tip mark, that means you've already got the components and you can go ahead and craft them straight away. If it's got any of the components listed, I think white, that means it's gonna to have to craft them components first out of the raw resources, so it'll take longer. You'll literally need thousands of these to go ahead and unlock everything in the first set of tiers. Eventually, these will be upgraded to a blue kind and they cost even more of the purple. So you never want to stop making purple cores. Once you start getting your factory set up, You've always got to have this in production because you'll need it for the next stage as well. So once you've got enough, now the fun begins. You've got to place them somewhere. I aggravated my chat streaming this the other day because I was just absolutely placing it anywhere. You can be a bit more careful if you want. But like I said, this is still the tutorial area. So you can be a bit more neater in the next phase. Just go ahead and put enough down. If you've got a bunch of these and you haven't actually got the way that you can keep them nice and ordered, it's definitely still worth placing all of them down on the floor somewhere. So you probably have started to run out of the ingots. Now it's gonna be time to get the smelters up and running. And of course, if you can't see smelters, well, that's because you need to go and unlock them now that you've placed eight of them cores. And that's how it works. RB and LB to flick through the different tiers. There's not really a lot of choice in the early stages. So literally just unlock what comes first. I would say later on though, when you start getting more cosmetic items, things like light fixtures and stuff, although they can be quite easy to make as they only cost a few cores, it's still probably worth saving them cores to get better items, especially crafting. So now we've got our smelters, go ahead and craft a couple. We kind of want a ratio of one to one. So if you've got a drill, then you want one furnace per drill. Also, if you can make more drills, you might as well do that as well. And again, get more furnaces up and running, and this will help you out quicker. You'll gain upgrades to the crafting time, smelting time, etc. later, but it really is a bit of a bottleneck how long it takes to smelt stuff down. So you definitely want to have as many smelters as you've got drills. Remember, if you've misplaced something or it's just not fitting at the moment, you can go ahead and dismantle it by pressing LT and then RT to get rid of it. As you can see, it's giving me the mining drill back and all the resources inside it, losing the stuff I was using to power the drill. So what you want to do next is get your smelters and make sure that you place it with just one block in between. And for now, we're going to be doing this manually, but in a while, we're going to have the inserters transfer the ore into the smelter. Later on in your big main area, you want to leave more space so you can do all sorts of offshoots, but in this tutorial area, keep it nice and tight. At this stage, you're probably going to have to go and get a lot more of this. Also, don't forget your scanner. You do want to scan all of the resources that you come across, any weird plants. And if you go ahead and scan these lights, you actually get given them so you can use them where you want. So now top up your furnaces with obviously the plant matter and likewise go and do the same for the copper. You'll notice that your copper drill can hold 250 but this can be increased later on. So don't forget to empty the ones that you set up earlier to then go ahead and put straight into the smelter. So it really shouldn't take too long at all and then you've got all the ingots that you need to progress. Whack them in, upgrade your terminal, boom, terminal next tier. Now we've got unlocked conveyor belts, inserters, and containers. We've actually got to go ahead and put the stuff here inside. So obviously if it's highlighted, that means you could go ahead. Don't deposit your iron or your copper in first. Instead, make the containers, the inserters, and the conveyor belts. So by now your conveyor belts are made, and now we're gonna make the rest of the stuff. Two of these, and now we just need to make four inserters. So you may need some more resources. Remember, if something has stopped and it hasn't run out of fuel, it's probably because it's got too many in it. You can upgrade this so eventually you can hold 500 and even more, but you might have to empty out your mining drills as it's simply just not doing it, remember, until we actually put our conveyor belts or our inserters down. So for now, keep doing this manually, empty your drills, and make sure you distribute it all evenly. Don't just put everything in one smelter. You can always take stuff out as well, doing it manually like that. 
Now we can make the inserters. Go ahead and make a bunch more. In fact, if you can make all 10, you might as well. Deposit the inserters you need in the terminal and then with the rest, start connecting up your drills to your furnaces. Obviously the arrows are pointing in the right direction as that's where the flow will go. If it looks like things aren't moving, well don't forget it has got to cook the next piece of ore before it puts the next one in. You can dump a bunch in there but the inserter holds off putting another one in until it's ready. And obviously if you want to spend more time you can go ahead and put the actual conveyor belts down and have it all running nicely rather than kind of do it quick just to get through the guide or the tutorial but here you go here is what it looks like when it's on the actual conveyor belts into a storage. Craft a couple of these extra ones up as well and again you can place these directly opposite your smelter with just an inserter in between and it will go ahead and start filling up your box. You can of course run your conveyor belts as well if you need it to turn an angle, instead of actually just laying it like that and then doing it like this, you can see it's not hitting on. Sometimes if you do it at the end, it should turn, but you're better off trying to get used to flipping them as you move. So press the RT button to place, then tap the RB button to go in what direction you want it to go. You have to move over to what side it is. And there we go. We've now got two of them smelters delivering the ore or the iron ingots into the box. So we've got enough to proceed, let's dump that in, and boom, next tier. An early unlock with your cores is being able to gather items in a big area. So this works for any of your smelters or storage boxes that you have. So it might be worth unlocking that with some spare cores. This can be upgraded much, much more later. So you can literally gather everything in your storages or whatever it is much quicker. So for now though, do a run. I wouldn't necessarily even build conveyor belts at the moment. It's not really worth it. Just focus on what you need to do next for the terminal. You can see now we've got the mission to follow the beacon to the secured facility. You can stay here and make this place your own and you can run the conveyor belts down, but it's quite away from the main hub where you're gonna be spending a lot of your time. That's why I say just kind of dump this area. So let's go and get some more stuff. Follow the little river just past the copper deposits and you're gonna be going pretty much this direction. You'll start seeing the purple plants through the caverns and head towards the exclamation mark. Don't try digging any tunnels. Have a good explore and see if there's any riverbeds that, or tunnels that will take you places quicker and you'll come across this bunker. If it's closed and won't let you access it, you need to complete more of the terminal missions first. Always have your scanner out when you're doing these missions in case you need to scan anything new. If you go all the way down, jump over these boxes, and then keep dropping down all the way to the bottom, you can find yourself a little secret box of loot. Then just work your way all the way through these boxes, and you've got another one. Then just go back to where you found the first box, and you should be able to go ahead and jump up the crates again to get out. Then you can go ahead and keep going the right way. You'll find a previous uh, explorer, but more importantly, the orange cube. This effectively is the story and it will guide you along. Make sure you get the stuff out of that chest and you're pretty much done with this area. On your way out, the gate will open and you'll have the new technology and this is gonna be your upgraded drill. Also pay attention to any cores that you picked up as we're gonna be placing them down as soon as we can. So you can head back either through the river that you came down or the other side. So now you've unlocked the mole, which is basically your mining drill with a huge massive laser and it's much better than just the pickaxe. But you do need cores to actually get it. If you haven't got enough cores, remember to go and place the ones that you've already accumulated. Then simply craft your mole. You've now got this second location and this second one is gonna be where you spend the majority of your time in your first few hours of the game. Before heading off there, you might want to invest a little bit in getting automated stuff going on just here. So ideally you want at least the splitters to be taking your ore to the smelter and you want to leave it with as much fuel as you can. As so we're about to go and clear out a secret little area that's going to give us lots of biofuel chips that basically burn longer and so you get more use out of them rather than the plant matter. So you can pretty much see it here. That's that area with all the green boxes. That's where we're trying to get into. So go into this lush cave nearby with the purple tree and look for this little bit here where there seems to be some sort of tunnel and dig your way through. If you ever come across some dirt that seemingly just won't disappear, check it's got any kind of green ore inside it 
or anything else, and you may need to actually blow that up with charges later. Follow the tunnel all the way through. If you turn back when you get to the torch, you'll be now in another area. Totally worth going ham on this and picking up all of the splitters as this will give you the core components you need. You might also find some of the bio bricks in this storage. So these are the things that will burn a lot longer in your smelters and fuel your drills. You'll learn how to make them later as well. So get anything that's broken inside here by scanning it all. Now you could actually just come in here and smelt up your ores if you really wanted to and just dump a lot of the bricks inside to cook them quicker and easier while you're doing even more. There's not a lot of space and yeah, you can't move some of these items that are left here. Clear all the bricks from containers, otherwise they're going to keep pumping out onto the conveyor belts. And yeah, you can just dump a bunch of ore in here if you want to take more of your time and get lots of ore going. But you can't place any new machines. So once you mess around there, return back to your area, make sure everything's running a little bit more, as we're going to keep this burning just a bit longer, maybe make one trip back here after we go to the new area. Go ahead and place some splitters between the actual drills and the smelters. You could probably get away with only having one inserter. Having two inserters means you'll be probably overloading the actual smelter. It's just not quick enough. Of course, once you've got abundance of materials, it's well worth just putting two of the inserters down. Later on, you will get the upgrades, as I keep saying. And do look out, there is three entrances for the drill. That's for one of them to put the biochips in to keep it fueled. So you can effectively make continuous loops that feed your drills and your smelters with enough fuel to keep them going perpetually and it does look like the ores never burn out they'll just keep producing either copper iron or more so by now hopefully you've cooked up any other extras that you had and you can go ahead and just empty everything out and take it all back with you and you can see i've built up 375 ingots already making sure this is all going while i did other stuff and we're pretty much good to go to the next area so start following the small river again past the terminal and obviously just heading towards the exclamation mark. It's pretty easy. You'll come to a point here where it's clearly able for you to dig through and it's got light showing. Later on, you'll get coolant that can help you stop being overheated. It's a resource that you'll use for making stuff, but as long as you've got some on you as well, it will use it up to stop you basically being overheated. So you can carry on digging as much as you want. And just want to dig your little tunnel following the river. And there we go. You might have to dig away a little bit on this small riverbed, but once you do that, eventually you'll make it to the next area. And this is where you're going to be spending the majority of your time. Nice pretty waterfall. We've got the new terminal. There's lots and lots of things to go and explore. And my second episode is going to be more detailed about setting up actual factories and giving you some more locations, secret areas, and what to go and craft first. I know I've kind of rushed through a little bit of the tutorial, but like I said, I saw so many comments already saying they were struggling, so hopefully that's give you a little bit more guidance. The next episode is going to be the very next day, so you haven't got long to wait at all. Until next time, Rat Bags, laters.